Hey guys, Ash here coming at you today. I'm Ray Shadow Legends. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the video. Send us some love, some positive vibes your way, especially if you need it out there today. Man, I have been binging CoffeeZilla's YouTube channel. Are you guys familiar with that channel? Oh man, I just, I, I'm embarrassed to say because he's so popular, but I just discovered it uh, a couple weeks ago. And man, I just got finished with like a whole three part. I uncovered a $500 million scam and I am feeling it. So uh, recommend that to anybody who's interested in such things. I've never been into like scammer content or anti scammer content, but something about him really got me going. I'll try to remember to link it in the comments uh, for you guys who are interested. I want to ask you guys a question, right? If you could start your account with any epics in the game let's just say eight because that's how many i have on my list today who would you choose now let me just start out by saying that you're absolutely going to be offended and angry at this list because i didn't pick all just the no-brainers i tried to have like a nice mix of my personal favorite epics epics that are going to have the biggest impact on your account inside the entire game that you're going to play in the early in the mid and in the end game of raid shadow legends so you guys let me know who doesn't belong on my list and who you would replace them with i can't wait to read your suggestions so without further Further ado, let's jump into it. You know what? Let's start with an obvious one, and that's going to be, of course, Seer. You guys know my undying love for Seer. I think she's amazing. She's the best PVE nuker in the game, in my opinion, uh, as well as just, just a wave killer, a wave destroyer with Karma Burn. And I think she's actually an underrated champion uh, for Arena, right? As all the Ghost Second teams, all the Sifties and Duchesses and buffs everywhere out there, built her with enough accuracy. You remove everything and you just kill everybody right just gotta be careful of polymorph and me also <laughs> but either way guys seer is incredible uh you know every every piece of content well, I shouldn't say every piece because Sand Devil and Phantom Grove, there are no waves, right? And neither are Iron Twins, so bad example. But Doom Tower, for example, she is probably the most used champion in all of Raid Shadow Legends, Doom Tower, and everywhere else. What else do you want from me? It's Seer. She's amazing. Next, uh, while we're here, guys, you know how much I freaking love Tagor. Uh, he would undoubtedly be on my list. I still can't believe it, man. I go on all these other channels. I collab with all the other, you know, content creators out there. And uh, let me tell you, nobody picks Tagore as their, you know, most underrated or favorite. So are they crazy? Or am I crazy? Because you still won't see any Tagore on any top 10, top 20, heck, even top 30 tier list of epic champions. But let me sell them to you. Let me let me see if I can sell you a Tagore. He's got the magic stick with the increased defense on the ally, uh, on the ally with the current lowest HP for two turns. So the big version, I just want to stay on this for a second. The big version of increased defense for two turns on the ally who needs it the most. I love that because even if everybody's max HP, it's still going to go on your nuker who arguably probably needs it more than anybody else, right? Your squishiest unit. It's a great A1, you know, uh, on the A2. AoE, which actually, he, his damage scales on attack. It's a three-turn cooldown. His attack is, is high for a support reviver. He can nuke, not like Genbo the Dishonored nuke, but he can nuke. He can put out some damage, right? You'd be, you, you'll be shocked and how much damage he puts out for a reviver. He's got the big version of increased speed on a three turn cooldown. With the AoE, with the good heal, 15% of this champion's max HP, right? So we build him a lot of HP, it ends up being 25 or 30 or 40% of the other allies HP, it's a nice heal. So we've got the good heal, the increased speed, big version, AoE attack, decent multipliers for a support champion. And then rise and fight, he's got to revive on a five turn cooldown. He's got 30% HP, but he's got a shield, 20% again of this champion's max HP. But it keeps going. Aid the Feeble, he has a built-in damage mitigator of 10% for all allies with less than 50% uh, HP. That's really, really strong, extremely valuable. There's not that much, there's not that many, excuse me, damage mitigators out there in the game, right? 
I mean, the Pythians, the Duchesses, and then Tagore. You got uh, you got Norog. You, there's there's a few more, but not a lot, not a lot. And he's got a really solid one, especially for an epic man. We can get rid of him. Not without cause, Michael. I have cause. It is because I hate him. You add all that to HP and all battles by 25 percent. Yeah, you got revives, increased speed. You got some damage. You got increased defense. You got damage mitigation. I mean, you have to move forward. I love Tagore. Okay, all right, I love him. All right, let's go to an obvious one. Uh, one of the most special legend. I, I think if we're going to choose any, any epic in the game, maybe with one or two exceptions, but any epic in the game who's a void epic, who could be a void legendary, and she'd still be used and wanted, it would be Godseeker Aniri. I submit to you. Boom. I picture the law and order going off in my head. I submit to you that Godseeker Aniri is a void legendary, ladies and gentlemen. Why? Well, she's got a great heal. She's got increased buff duration. She's got decreased duration of buffs on enemies. Okay, all on a three-turn cooldown. She's got a passive that increases healing uh, all the time. And then she's got a preemptive revive on death for somebody before their damage is taken. Be that, that allows her to duo Sand Devil. The only champion out there who's, you know, used to, to duo Sand Devil at really any stage. Uh, because she has this one. And then she has the regular revival. Guess what? On a regular revival, four turn cooldown, the only champion in the game that resets the cooldown of all of their skills. Man, that's insane. That's insane. That is beautiful, right? You know, you duo with a, I duo with her in Walking Tomb Drang, right? And, you know, it, or a ninja, whoever it may be, Cronum. They just go into their best ability again right after they die, right? But I don't want to limit her just to Sand Devil. She's tremendous everywhere in the game. It's Godseeker Aniri. It's a no-brainer that I'm taking her. All right, guys. Let me go with maybe a little curveball to you guys. But bear with me. Uh, it's going to be none other than an undead horde, not Demon Spawn. And his name is Seeker. Yeah. I went Seeker. I feel like, you know, Seeker, he's such an old champion. He's the oldest champion on my list. Almost everybody else are expansion champions. But he's an old school champ. And he's still got it, man. Why do I put him on the list? Because he's so instru- First of all, he's just a good champion, right? Very good in arena. He's uh, good on go second teams in the arena. with the, the defensive aura and the increased defense on all allies when he's hit with a critical hit. Uh, so very good on go second teams. Exceptionally good on go first teams. We get a turn meter boost. We get the big, a 30%, excuse me, turn meter boost at that. Very good. And then we get the increased attack, the big version on all allies. And then the extra turn, you come in and you pop somebody with a provoke from the A1. Uh, really strong arena opener, really strong arena go second champion. But of course, nobody can do what Seeker can do in terms of Batman comps. I mean, look at half the unkillable comps in this game. Who do you see in it? I don't have Maneater on the list. He's a great champion, fantastic champion. But Seeker's the dude who's instrumental to a lot of these one key Ultra Nightmare teams out there, the unkillables, because he's the only champion in the game that can provide a 30% turn meter boost on a two turn cooldown. Why do I say two? It's on a three because he gets that extra turn that bumps it down to a two turn cooldown. And that makes him the only champion in the game who can do that, you know, including every legendary. That's what makes him so special. One of the many reasons, but especially that. So Seeker does make my list. I just feel like he's so good in so many different areas and he's irreplaceable in a big one in a lot of guild boss unkillable teams which would be what i would start to make now there's other like i could go honorable mentions for days here guys i have a family to look after but you know even like a vogoth i love vogoth so much and granted he's a void legendary but there is somebody else out there now that kind of does what he does in grazur he has the uh, the heal when he's hit you know so i could kind of say that about a lot of epics in there i tried to pick ones that are super unique still uh to that point this might shock you guys but i have croyd in the blue on the list bear with me here guys bear with me croyd in the blue i feel like he is uh just kind of like tagore right i feel like he's so unbelievably underrated you know now unlike a lot of the, the champions on today's list he's a little bit more of a progression champ uh with one big exception in fire knight he's definitely an end game fire knight champion there's no doubt about it 
Uh, he's run on a bunch of Fire Knight 10 hard teams, the, the most difficult dungeon in the game. So I, get, I think it's unfair for me to even say he's a progression champ. Forget that. Forget I even said it. He's got a triple hitter with a freeze on each hit. 35% of freeze on each hit on his A1. Obviously, freeze turns into control against Fire Knight hard, but still is a triple hit even in Fire Knight normal or anywhere else normal. Throw on some, uh, some uh, Giant Slayer on that too. And then look at this. Razor Hail. I'll tell you what, guys. They didn't make abilities like this back in my day. No way. A two-time hitter, each hit with a 65% chance of placing freeze on a three-turn cooldown. Wow. That's really good. That's almost a guaranteed freeze. Obviously, it's 65, but it's two chances for 65. It's a, re it's a three-turn cooldown. That's better than most legendaries. That's a very good CC ability. And it's a two-time hitter. Uh, on top of all of that, guys, check this out. It just keeps getting, like, if his kit stopped there, I'd be like, okay, that's a pretty dang good, pretty cool, kind of like a Fenshi. Like, pretty cool Fire Knight champion. Absolutely cool, right? But then it just keeps getting really better. Blessing of the Blue gives increased speed and a turn meter boost of 15% to all allies on a three-turn cooldown. So now he's got like an apothecary, a, uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, oh God. What am I, why am I, Golden Reaper, there we go. How would I describe myself? Three words, hardworking, alpha male, jackhammer. Got kind of a Golden Reaper ability type thing built in there. Uh, increased speed is an instrumental, instrumental buff to have on your team. And he's got turn meter fill on top of that. Fills his champion's turn meter by 5% for each freeze debuff placed by this champion. And this dude is a freeze placing machine. He's the best control epic out there, certainly in terms of freeze. Uh, and then he's got that beautiful increased speed and turn meter boost. I think he's a really, really special champion, guys. Can you tell? Can you tell? What do you think? Do you, am I too high on Croydon? Or am I just right on Croydon? Should I be concerned? By the way, I should give a massive shout to White Dryad Naya, too. She's very, very good. Uh, actually, a lot of these champions are. They're not messing around on these Sylvan Watchers epics, huh, guys? I kind of like Kellen. I like Duden's okay. Dothy's good. Orn is great. I love Orn. Uh, Ruella. Ayella is pretty cool on her passive. Uh, so they got Naya, as I mentioned. They got some good ones. All right. Uh, let's cover the most obvious. Want to do the most obvious? It's going to be, well, I could be going a couple different directions with the most obvious here, right, guys? Demith Demitha. Let's cover Demitha first, right? Uh, of course I would take Demitha. I didn't have Man Eater, but I do have Demitha. Why? Because she's got increased duration of ally buffs, one of the strongest abilities in the game. You know, they're adding quite a few champions the last year that also have this, so it's not as rare as it used to be, but it's still as freaking good as it used to be. Increased duration is buff of buffs. I mean, I'm stating the obvious here, but this gives you the ability to take those two turn buffs, which is the, the standard in this game, uh, increased defense for two turns on a three turn cooldown, right? And all of a sudden, you just have it up all the time, especially if you time things correctly in terms of speed tuning. Then you get a, a heal with an extra heal for each for each uh, added or removed turn from the duration of buffs and debuffs by this skill, right? Very nice. Decrease the duration of all debuffs on allies by one turn. I say this all the time, but I feel like people underrate this ability. Sometimes one turn decrease is all you need. I mean, think about it this way. If you have a stun on an ally, it's going to be cleansed. There's not that many two-turn stuns out there in the game. There's only a few. Uh, so, you know, it, it's it's really powerful, okay? Uh, and then the block damage and the continuous heal, more heals, on a three-turn cooldown. She has block damage uh, on a three-turn cooldown. That makes her one of the best unkillable type champions out there in the game and she adds so much else to the table as well including defense in all battles on that aura to top things off of course geomancer i think geomancer is that's it those are my seven champions seeker demitha geo seer to gore god seeker ursula croydon that's eight let's change it from seven to eight geomancer man uh who did i snub by the way because this is it this is it uh I snubbed a lot, but it's tough. Who would you choose if you had eight uh, shots? He's got the AOE increase, uh, excuse me, decrease attack. He's uh, he's removing buffs, stealing buffs if they're under a burn. 
Uh, and, the, and of course, Quicksand Grass, man. It's a three turn cooldown. He's got the HP burn, the big version of Weaken. It, it lasts for three turns, too, which is, you know, really awesome. You don't need any extending uh, debuffs or anything like that. It's just always up there. And then, of course, Stone Guard makes him one of the most ca capable damage dealers for Iron Twins, for Fant uh, for uh, uh, Shogun, for Hydra, for every doom tower boss or it feels like you know i use him on never spider i use it i mean you can just use this dude almost everywhere and he's just what, what do you want me to say about this guy right like he will change your account probably more than almost any other epic on this list because he does what he does which is a lot of damage and a lot more than just damage he's a very nice kit even outside of that that passive synergizing with the a3 uh and yeah what more do you want me to say it's just he does better than most legendaries in the game almost all legendaries in the game when it comes to being a boss killer in raid shadow legends guys there you have it those are my eight choices who would yours be let me know in the comments below much love and as always take care guys